Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the Sony Xperia Z3 Compact Tablet on the left and the Google Nexus 9 manufactured by HTC on the right. In terms of pricing and specifications, you're looking at $499 for the Xperia Z3 Compact, 8-inch display, Qualcomm Snapdragon Quad-Core 801, complemented by 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, you have IP68, uh, water and dust proofing, or resistance I should really say, I'll talk about that a little bit later, a front-facing 2.1 mega, uh, megapixel camera, 8 megapixel shooter on the back, 1080p, 30p video capture from both cameras, very good camera software. This runs KitKat out of the box, uh, does have dual band Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, everything you would expect, GPS, and a very nice 8-inch triluminous display, uh, 1200 by 1920. 9.4 ounces in change. An incredible package, in my opinion, and expandable storage up to 128 gigs with a micro SD card. Uh, on the other side, you're looking at Nexus 9, stock Lollipop, the latest and greatest from Google, uh, both in terms of hardware and software, which is what the Nexus lineup is all about. You're looking at a 8.9 inch IPS LCD, not a uh, uh, the same technology, which is the triluminous display type that Sony's, you know, own pri uh, proprietary display type. I wish both of these would have AMOLEDs, but that's another story altogether. But an 8.9 inch uh, IPS display, 2048 by 1536 resolution, so very competent, definitely higher uh, than the uh, full HD display on the 8 inch smaller Sony. Beyond that, you have, of course, dual band Wi-Fi, NFC, Bluetooth, everything you'd expect. Fixed internal storage, by the way, is 16 gigs on both of these devices. If you want to step up to higher capacities, you will have to also uh, shell out at, to the higher price. And you can also pick up either of these tablets with LTE, for those of you that are curious. When it comes to the web browsing experience, uh, both offer, I would say, very good performance, and both rely on Chrome. And that's because out of the box, that's all you're going to see uh, with uh, basically either experience, whether we're in the lollipop world or, in this case, still in KitKat, but Sony has guaranteed that we will see lollipop. So, and I believe that because this is a flagship device for them. So let me go ahead and give you my first little web browsing comparison. We'll see if we get desktop, desktop from both, and performance is not going to be an issue web browsing on either of these devices. I can assure you of that. Uh, the display on both of them is very good. Front-facing speakers, I didn't mention the cameras on the Nexus 9, I'm sorry I excluded that, good thing I remembered. Uh, 1.6 front-facing, the rear is also 8 megapixels, and you do have an LED flash. Uh, but this is a much larger, heavier tablet, you're looking at 15 ounces as opposed to the 9.5 as I mentioned here. No waterproofing, dust proofing, uh, but definitely superior build quality to, to any Nexus tablet uh, from years past. You also now have a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and you can see a perfect example of what media consumption or reading content on 4 by 3 versus a 16 by 9 or in some cases 16 by 10 aspect ratio on a traditional Android tablet. Uh, in my opinion I prefer the Sony, I prefer the the non 4 by 3 aspect ratio but clearly Google is after those of you that wanted it that are Android users as well as those of you who aren't Android users for that very reason. So now you've been accommodated. But you get to do so in style because you are getting Lollipop, a complete revamp, uh, a lighter, airier, uh, new notification system. Basically everything has been revamped and that will come to this tablet, don't get me wrong, uh, but you're starting with KitKat and Sony's overlay, which some will like, others will detest, and that's what Nexus devices are designed to do. Accommodate those of you who don't want a manufacturer's quote-unquote bloat, even though in many instances it's very functional, I would say feature-added bloat for that matter, uh, and Sony does do that in some cases here. No IR blaster, unfortunately, on the Sony, but clearly that's not happening here either on the Nexus. But you're stuck with the internal 16 gigs here. You can expand it, uh, not onboard, no micro SD card slot for storage expansion, but you can hook up uh, through the USB port down here at the bottom, the micro USB port, uh, a on-the-go cable and hook up jump drives, card readers, hard drives if they can be powered by the tablet. Now when it comes to uh, your AV experience, you know, watching movies, streaming stuff from Netflix, playing games, they're both very close. The speakers are very loud on both of these front-facing on both of these devices. They've 
taken notes from user complaints about non-front-facing speakers. And this is not the first time Sony's done it, uh, but uh, or Google for that matter. Uh, and I would say they're very close, which is a lot in favor for the Sony considering its tremendous size difference uh, compared to the Nexus 9. So both give good AV experience, but I definitely prefer the aspect ratio on the Sony. Hands down, no comparison whatsoever. Uh, when it comes to the display quality, a lot of people are going to want to know which is better. That is really a matter of the aspect ratio. Uh, some people won't consider this because it's 4x3, and other people will not consider this because it's not. So that's really my best way of putting it. Either way, I can tell you you're getting top-notch displays that really don't disappoint. No uh, backlight ble uh, bleed on either, no dead pixels. And by the way, build quality is exceptional on both of these tablets. Even though the Sony is, to me, more of a marvel because of its how thin and yet durable it uh, at least appears to be. Granted, I haven't taken it to the beach, uh, which I wouldn't recommend doing with any tablet. Uh, but definitely because of that IP68 rating, you have more flexibility in what you can do, where you can go with it, than with the Nexus 9. But the Nexus 9 does incorporate, for the first time, a metallic build. Uh, and even though this only has 2 gigs of RAM as opposed to the 3 gigs of RAM uh, that the Sony has, the most important element of this tablet is that Tegra K1 processor under the hood. And the Tegra K1 really is, right now, in its 64-bit form, the best mobile processor, at least that exists to date. It is a dual core uh, processor, but in terms of its overall single core performance, there's nothing else like it. So even though this doesn't have three gigs of RAM, the combination of Lollipop and what is arguably the most powerful mobile processor on the market, then with a very good screen and a form factor that many users in the four by three aspect ratio have been waiting for or just wanted Google to make so they could cross over, they're getting it all at $399, and that's less than Sony at $499, even with all the features, the waterproofing, and the considerable uh, size difference uh, for almost the same uh, amount of screen real estate. Of course, the 4x3 does afford more real estate for certain tasks, but when it comes to movies, you're not really getting more here in the 8.9, not that much more than the, the literal count isn't even the actual amount because you're going to be letterboxed on a lot of things. And yes, you can stretch it out and fill screen, but that's not how video is supposed to look even on mobile devices, in my opinion. Uh, but when it comes to web browsing, again, things are very good on both of these devices. Uh, whether you're doing light tasks or heavy, uh, you know, full HD video playback, these tablets aren't going to have an issue. Uh, they're too high-end, even though the 801 is an older chip, it's still one of the best on the market, which is why you find it in so many devices today. We got mobile on this for both. Let's go ahead and get desktop versions. And really, the good news about this comparison is that no matter which tablet you go with, you're going to be very happy with your purchase. There's no question it's tough to swallow the Sony at 500 for a 16 gig uh, Wi-Fi tablet in this era simply because Google has been making Nexus tablets now for years uh, that have pretty much offered more power than anyone else for the price point and now they've even added a more premium build quality with the metal uh, HTC construction that HTC is known for. Uh, I'm not in love with the plastic backing by the way it is a fingerprint magnet the Sony does not have that problem for those of you that are curious but there are a lot of problems it doesn't have and benefits it doesn't have that the Nexus 9 does, like the software and processor. Uh, but otherwise, everything else is pretty much in the Sony's favor. I mean, the size, the waterproofing, uh, the extra gig of RAM I can't take away from Sony. Uh, the screen, I would say, is definitely better, in my opinion, not only in terms of form factor, the aspect ratio, but also the actual triluminous display. I do think it's better than a traditional IPS screen. This is the same tech Sony incorporates into their top tier 4K displays, which are, in my opinion and most of the industry's opinion, some of the best, if not the best TVs that money can buy today. So uh, Sony's got a lot going for it in the Z3 Compact, and Google's got probably the best tablet they've ever made in the Nexus 9. Uh, $100 separates these, and uh, but that's not what separates the buyers, obviously, the two potential customers for these devices, because one is made to strike that I would say perfect compromise for media of all types and e-reading at a price point that people are going to find palatable and a form factor they're going to like. 
uh, and still feel is smaller and more lightweight than their iPad. Uh, it'll still take on the iPad Mini 3. This, the Sony, definitely take, kills the iPad Mini 3, in my opinion, and gives the Nexus 9 a strong run for its money, even though it's a little bit too expensive. I mean, there's no question about that. I can't help Sony with where they came up with that $500 price point. This really could have started at $400 and made the higher internal storage capacity $100 if they wanted to gouge. Uh, but they're looking at the Galaxy Tab S line. Most will, users will want to compare this to the Galaxy Tab S 8.4, and the 8.4, in my opinion, because it has a better display, is better than this tablet. Just on that alone, if it didn't have competent hardware, even though it is old internal uh, you know, computing power there, it's still completely competent in today's world for gaming and work. As are both of these, even though they do have bleeding edge tech inside, because even though the 801 is a little bit old, especially compared to the K1 64-bit chip here, it still is one of the best mobile processors and most efficient you're going to get. And speaking to efficiency, let's talk about battery life, because that's something I want to talk about. Um, about the same here, even though you've got a much bigger tablet, bigger display here on the right with the Nexus 9, uh, you can get somewhere between 6 and 8 with heavy use, brightness all the way up, which I've had through the course of this video. Uh, if you choose to you know, play with brightness and not tax the tablets as much, if you're not gaming or doing, you know, playing back, uh, well, playing back video won't be a problem, but doing anything that really taxes the device is what I would say. Trying to dabble with 4K, which I'm not sure why you would on these, even though the processors can actually uh, take it on. Uh, the point is, is that uh, you're looking at more like six to eight hours. Uh, KitKat, battery life, standby, a little bit more refined, a little bit better than what I'm experiencing with the Nexus 9 so far. Let me go to another website, uh, and let's try just a little more browsing uh, and because basically what it comes down to again is the form factor and pricing and whether you really care about the waterproofing you know if you have children then that might be something even if you don't have children if you want to be able to go anywhere you know that this tablet can do things can take a beating that the Nexus 9 even though it's heavier uh, simply can't uh, also no fingerprint magnet on the back of the Sony even though you will get that with the plastic back on the HTC manufactured Nexus 9. And that's something noteworthy in my opinion uh, in the scope of things. But let me just go ahead and go to the New York Times as one last test. And really as I've reiterated over and over again, the good news is both are great products and that's what I like to see in the world even though I didn't get that timing down perfectly and I got a mobile site here. So what I'll do is I will refresh this. I'll stop it right now and refresh this. It's not a perfect solution, but it's as good as I can do uh, for the time being. And apparently I hit the wrong thing there. It's asking me to sign into Chrome. Sorry for that mistake. Let's try it again. I obviously did not hit request desktop. Hopefully that time I did and I did. And things are really close, and that is the bottom line here, is that despite the better processor, despite the extra RAM, the experience in the real world is so close that it comes down to, do you want the smaller form factor? Do you want the waterproofing, expandable storage, better cameras, even though they're very similarly rated, again, 2.1, 1.68 on the back of each of these tablets. Let me flip them uh, both over. And there's no question the Sony cameras are better as is the accompanying software and that's because Sony's in the business of making cameras folks they're a DI business in fact many tablets and smartphones your iPhone has a Sony sensor so that's where you get your great image quality from of course the lens is important too all manufacturers now putting an emphasis on the lenses since these type of devices not these but phones are replacing point-and-shoot cameras and have been for many years you do get the LED flash here with the Nexus 9 but considering neither is really a great photographic tool, I couldn't care less that the Sony does not have it. I like that uh, Sony identifies where the, the actual NFC contact point is. Uh, and again, I wish both of these had wireless charging. Unfortunately, they do not. Uh, the Nexus 9 at first glance doesn't look like it picks up fingerprints, but boy does it, as I have reiterated over and over again. Uh, really nothing on the Nexus 9 uh, except for the charging port right here at the bottom of the tablet. And beyond that, you've got a power button and a volume rocker, but otherwise the body is completely clean, the 35 millimeter headphone jack right there. And there's your power button and volume rocker right there. 
And that is literally it on this tablet. There's nothing else except for the camera and those front firing speakers and that front facing uh, camera itself. So really clean design. That's not a surprise. This really just looks like, you know, the Nexus 7 growing into an 8.9 inch tablet. Uh, Sony, on the other hand, took their Xperia uh, line of tablets and made something that looks just like previous gens, but is really now literally an extension or larger duplicate of the Xperia Z3. And this reminds me a lot of what Apple did with, you know, the iPod, iPad, iPod Touch, iPhone. These were all products that evolved from another, essentially. And Sony has now taken that approach this late in the game, but it works. That's the good news. Build quality is great. The waterproofing feature is good for those that need it. Uh, those of you that are disturbed by the ports being covered, I can tell you they're actually easy to open up, unlike previous generations. I'm going to move this out of the way so we don't lose focus. Uh, right here at the bottom of the tablet, your adaptive charging bay, and it really does open very seamlessly, and there you have it. And uh, charge times are fast. I mean, no other way to put it. That's one of the nice modern uh, things that we're getting now with mobile devices, which is long overdue. Uh, the front firing speakers, as I mentioned, they're kind of just laid into the bezel right here. Uh, very minimalist design. There's your power button, volume rocker. And there's no question from a design perspective, not just because of the form factor and waterproofing, I prefer the Sony. I mean, when you can go lightweight and still not compromise on your specifications, in fact, have even more because of the uh, storage expansion capability, uh, that to me is a big bonus. I would have liked to have seen the infrared blaster, even though I don't actually ever personally use tablets as universal remote controls. I know most of the market that Sony's trying to market to, especially since this is Sony, right? who makes tab, uh, consumer electronics TVs for a living, you'd expect that they would have known better. Your micro SD card slot uh, for storage expansion right there. Again, also not going to take any science to open up. And there's the dummy for where uh, the actual LTE, or excuse me, your SIM card would go in the event that this was a SIM enabled device. So Sony just putting a dummy in there. They don't manufacture a different version, but rather just uh, add the hardware to the LTE enabled. Uh, Xperia Z3 compact tablet. So uh, really nice tablets, both of them. I think they are winners either way. And it's really, again, a matter of form factor, whether or not you need the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, whether you need Nexus updates all the time, uh, because there are plenty of consumers who don't care about having the latest and greatest software uh, from Google. Uh, the Lollipop uh, update is a tremendous one. As I mentioned before, airy, it looks great. Uh, functions well. It's so clean. It's just the refresh and revamp that Android has been waiting for. The 4 by 3 aspect ratio, I could do without. Anyone who follows me, subscribes to my channel knows I'm not a fan. It's my least favorite part of the Nexus 9. Really the only knock, because every other element of the Nexus 9 that I don't care for is inherent in the Nexus design. You know, the lack of expandable storage, uh, usually unimpressive cameras. Again, not that I care about cameras. Uh, but what's important is the core The core elements are the uh, things that the Nexus pulls off very well, software and hardware, and it does exactly that. Sony tries to hit it all out of the park, and that's tougher to do, but that's why they charge more and I think have spent more on R&D and what they've put together with this device, again, even though it's just an oversized Xperia Z3, but that happens to be a good thing in a world of a litany of smartphones and tablets that really are underperformers rather than uh, delivering on so much potential that they could possibly have. So again, two really nice devices. You get great uh, AV experiences, you know, watching movies, streaming, Netflix, whatever it may be out of both. Uh, with the Sony, one added bonus I didn't mention is the ability on your own home network that has a PS4, if you own one, uh, to play your PS4 title, similarly to the way the Shield tablet and Shield Portable could stream devices from your GTX-enabled computer gaming rig on your home network, as well as the cloud. Here you don't have the cloud to do it with, but you can play any of your PS4 titles on here with a PS4 controller. Now, whether or not you'll want to do that is another story entirely. You're not going to be doing that with the Nexus 9. There are software, uh, or I should say apps, to do those sort of things, but natively built in, this is the first Sony tablet to play PS4 games, stream them over your home network with basically minimal latency so that you can enjoy PS4 graphics on something this small, this light, this powerful, uh, and this 
uh, I would say again groundbreaking when it comes to the form factor performance ratio in the tablet uh, sector right now nothing else like it and the same goes for the Nexus 9 uh, it really both of these take on uh, Apple's I, uh, Air their current Air generation as well as Mini 3 uh, in my opinion and that's because they're both sub 10 inch clearly the 8.9 is closer but the fact that they're both so close to the Mini 3 means that both of these and I think this was intentional on both Google and Sony's behalf decided to make a tablet that they felt competed with both of so uh, uh, excuse me Apple's offerings rather than trying to attack both simultaneously now, that doesn't mean later down the road we won't see bigger versions of each of these maybe we will maybe we won't but for the time being I think this was a very smart move by both companies and I really do like the compromise that was struck in each of these uh, pieces of hardware and software uh, packages essentially that both companies have wrapped up for us so again whichever you decide to go with you're gonna be satisfied build qualities top-notch with both no backlight bleed no dead pixels uh, I haven't had any creak or flex again fingerprint magnet on the right no fingerprints on the left you could even clean the one on the left off by just running it under water if you wanted to you're not doing that with the Nexus 9 if you need the latest and greatest processor you've got it here you've also got the latest software but you better want a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and not care about the ability to expand storage without having to carry around a USB dongle and some extra storage because that's what you do have built into this tablet on the right, besides the better cameras and better camera software. And really, even though, you know, I talk about Lollipop and how clean the whole experience is, and it is, I mean, look at this, it's so clean. But when you look at what Sony has done, even with their notifications, I think it's pretty cool, and this is not native only to this, but to the Z3 itself as well. Uh, when you jump into settings here, notice that they don't look that different. I mean, even though this is brand new Lollipop, and just starting to hit devices and it will be on here eventually uh, Sony's been making this light airy version this light version of Android for quite some time so I think both are very polished in the software department the Sony has more bells and whistles we know that already it's a consumer electronics company it better uh, and you know quick customization uh, I already had it pulled up for widgets apps wallpapers themes whatever you want with a single long touch you're not doing that in Lollipop uh, in the same fashion but very similar and it shows you that Google again I think collectively has looked at what every manufacturer has done with their software and basically they have decided what they think works and doesn't and that's what Lollipop really at the end at the end of the day represents if you agree chime in in the comments but that's just my personal take on what I've experienced with Lollipop so far is that Google took a step back saw what everyone has done with Android to this point and took the best of everything and we have Android 5.0 and eventually you'll have it here as well so uh, both are great 500 400 base the price only goes up if you want more storage and LTE capability any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later